the only way we get out of this um, as a community intact without becoming virtual slaves or indentured servants is we have to trust ourselves and we have to commit to finding the information ourselves and evaluating it ourselves and thinking for ourselves. And that's the tool to keep, to neutralize the propaganda and also the awareness that these things are going on, that propaganda is being used against us. It is being weaponized. Since 2020, coronavirus has created an apparatus that allows governments to exert more and more control over citizens' lives. It's created a new, but not really new, profit model where corporations enrich themselves with public money by facilitating the development of public health tools like databases, surveillance systems, or dubious pharmaceutical products. Consent for these rigid control systems and financial looting is manufactured by the mainstream media. Its propaganda tells people that these measures and products are necessary and good. The sections of society that are opposed to this control-centered system that profits from lockdowns, online learning, telehealth, vaccine mandates, cross-border health checks, and new, potentially harmful pharmaceutical treatments are the sections of society that the system, whether it be a government or a corporation, rightly see as a threat. This opposition is known loosely as the health freedom movement. The main goal of any hyper-securitized, powerful institution is to destroy or fragment its threats, to defang them, to leave them neutralized and incapacitated. Governments are using psychological warfare and counterinsurgency tactics against the health freedom movement. Governments and government-linked institutions have outright considered these dissidents as terrorists, extremists, and enemies of, quote, public health. The Washington Post explained that people critical of the COVID regime are, quote, domestic terrorists. The Post is owned by Amazon's Jeff Bezos. Amazon has billions of dollars of contracts with the U.S. federal government. They're tied at the hip. The websites of militarized government agencies, such as Homeland Security, have also referred to the health freedom movement as extremists and terrorists. And the same goes for government-funded think tanks like the Brookings Institute. Earlier this year, it was blatantly obvious that such protest movements were considered threats by the state when the truckers' convoy of the U.S. and Canada, who were against the cross-border vaccine mandates, were met in their capitals by militarized police forces instead of alternative policy proposals. Google, which started as a government project and now receives millions upon millions of dollars from the U.S. federal government, deleted the accounts of the most organized health freedom organization in the U.S., Children's Health Defense. I sat down with Dr. Robert Malone, co-inventor and now critic of the mRNA vaccines that have become government's so-called cure to COVID-19, and we discussed several tactics that the authorities are employing to make the health freedom movement less of a problem. Malone highlighted how the health freedom movement is actively on the receiving end of intelligence-sponsored information warfare. So clearly we have a situation in which uh, the Five Eyes Alliance uh, um, intelligence community is actively manipulating the information landscape. A lot of this seems to be coordinated through British intelligence. And as you know, within the Five Eyes Alliance, of which the United States participates in, uh, there is a reciprocal relationship between different intelligence agencies. So formally, the CIA is not supposed to be operating against U.S. citizens on domestic soil. But uh, there is this long, and likewise, the British intelligence against their own citizens. But there's a long-standing reciprocal relationship wherein, for instance, British intelligence uh, has activities against U.S. citizens on U.S. soil, and the contrary is true. Uh, these, these uh, intelligence activities are often discussed as involving black hats and white hats, and, and uh, you know, this is an active topic on Reddit and others uh, about, about the role of the intelligence community and the factions within the intelligence community. Personally, having had experiences with intelligence officers in the, in the biodefense landscape for much of my career, uh, my attitude is that uh, um, an intelligence agent is lying pretty much all the time. They're trained liars, and uh, they, it can be useful interacting with them because by looking for things like limited hangouts, you can find that they, they do and say things to distract you from things that they don't want you uh, focusing on or thinking about. And so by that, you can often triangulate truth, particularly if you talk to multiple people. 
So you have to kind of learn in dealing with this information war environment that we're in, which is full on unrestricted 21st century information warfare and make no mistake that you have to think different. And one of the things you have to do is get over the idea that anything is personal. Um, this is information warfare. Malone explained that internet giants are heavily involved in this information warfare on behalf of the quote, public health regime, to the detriment of its dissidents. Virtually all the social media platforms are, are really weapons. We think of them as these benign entities, but those of us that have experienced Twitter and Facebook and Google recently, I think have all come to the conclusion that they're really not so benign. Twitter is a weapon. It is not a business, it's a weapon. And uh, I know that because I've worked in this space in supporting grants and contracts. Uh, Twitter was actively deployed as a weapon during Arab Spring. So it's no surprise that we have classic in information warfare and propaganda um, strategies being deployed on behalf of governments that perceive uh, resistance movements as a threat. Some tactics that these government agents employ, according to Malone, are very psychological. It involves identifying character flaws in leading dissidents and playing them against each other in order to damage the movement's cohesiveness and therefore effectiveness in resisting and organizing. These agents also use sex and money as a weapon. We have externally funded uh, uh, entities, agents, that seek to compromise those that are identified as leaders, turn them against each other, um, turn uh, people uh, in, uh, make them more paranoid, uh, afraid. These people that are doing this are, are trained. They're adroit at identifying the weaknesses of individuals. And so you may have an individual who has a dire need to be validated in some way. They have ego issues. They, they want to be seen as a very important person or a very important leader. Well, that's easily exploited. You may have other people that have other, uh, you know, the common one that I was warned about at the outset is uh, variations on the honey trap strategy. And of course, there's money. So for instance, you'll rarely, if ever, see a picture of me in a selfie where both my hands aren't visible. Because early on, I was at a meeting of uh, one of the physicians organizations, and back then we all hugged each other, where there was a lot of camaraderie and support, and, and we would line up on stage after we gave our talks and put our arms around each other uh, and allow photo sessions. And I did that in one uh, meeting where I was standing to the left of me, I was standing at the end to the left of me, was a young Chinese woman. Uh, so I put my arm around her just as I had my arm around the male physician to the right of me. Uh, and people took close-up photographs of my wedding ring around her waist as we were holding and in the line and then uh, propagated uh, memes about uh, that she was sleeping with all of us and, and this kind of stuff, which is, you know, highly damaging. In her case, uh, she called me up and said, if I would go on this particular podcast and say certain things, then all of this uh, attacks that were being mounted against me by various parties in the community on social media would go away, um, it, to which I basically hung up the phone uh, and reported to others that she was trying to blackmail. I mean, there's overt blackmail going on. This kind of uh, um, weaponized distortion of reality is actively being used to divide us. And it's, it's I, I can tell you personally, it takes a toll. Um, you know, having to, uh, having your wife come up to you and say, what's this? You know, um, you know were you cavorting with this young Chinese woman uh, or, or your peers? Um, uh, um, questioning whether or not you are a CAA agent or controlled opposition, which is often a, the attack that's used through multiple uh, different resistance movements. This always happens when, when things get to a certain level, and it often completely destroys the movement.
Malone explained that popular resistance movements need to be careful in order to be effective. The only way we get out of this um, as a community intact without becoming virtual slaves or indentured servants is we have to trust ourselves and we have to commit to finding the information ourselves and evaluating it ourselves and thinking for ourselves. And that's the tool to keep, to neutralize the propaganda and also the awareness that these things are going on, that propaganda is being used against us. It is being weaponized. And I think the other thing that's important for everybody to kind of get through their head is when, they, when they're shadow banned or whatever, or deplatformed from this or that or the other social media tool, you have to understand that it's not about you personally. It's about um, crafting a narrative and, a, and an information ecosystem that supports the interests of whoever it is that's paying. You have to get beyond the sense of being of personal affront and personal damage and realize that you're just a casualty of war and and this is unrestricted information warfare and it, nothing is fair nothing is right nothing is ethical in in total warfare none of that matters and that's what we're in right now If you want to continue seeing the other side of the story, not the government narrative or the corporate media narrative, head to rebelnewsusa.com.